What is up everyone? My name is Jill and welcome to my channel. Today's video is about, yes you guessed it, betta fish. And I know some of you are already thinking, Jill, you make so many videos about betta fish now, we're so tired of it, can you make videos about your Corydoras? I know, I know everyone, and I'm so sorry about that. Some of you might already know that my big tank that is housing my Corydoras, the whole tank, it's quarantined, and my fish are sick. It gives me a bad mood to like think about and talk about, so, I just haven't been doing that and talking about it, recording anything about it. So yeah, that's it. I do have betta fish though that are healthy and happy and I love them. So I hope that you guys don't mind me recording and uploading so many videos about betta fish. Anyways. Now this video has been long anticipated. I have people asking me about it all the time. So here it is. Today we're going to be attempting to spawn my betta fish. This was a steal. This was like $6 on sale and it's eight and a half liters. I feel like it's the perfect size to try to spawn my betta fish in. I want to transfer my male betta fish into this bucket. We're gonna leave him in this bucket to get comfortable and build a bubble nest. And then either tomorrow or the next day, we are going to add Jean into this bucket as well. And we'll see if we end up with any fry. Are you guys ready? For the people that know me, you could probably just guess that this aquarium Tupperware container is going to end up being a black water setup. So at the bottom of this Tupperware container, I put white sand and aqua soil to make it look natural. Over in my kitchen area, we have a piece of driftwood I've had forever. It's boiling, so it's being treated right now. I want to give the female a lot of places to hide. So just in case the male is being too much, she has places to go and she can feel safe. So the driftwood was a good option for me. It looks really good and I'm super happy with it. So checking back in with you soon. Now that we put our driftwood in, we're going to put in our Indian almond leaf. The idea with the Indian almond leaf is it will be floating at the top and then our male will make his bubble nest under the Indian almond leaf. But Indian almond leaves do tend to sink. And in the event the Indian almond leaf sinks, then what? You know, your bubble nest is gone. What are your fry gonna do? So a great solution to that is bubble wrap. A lot of betta breeders that use Indian almond leaves in their tank will also use bubble wrap. So we put the bubble wrap down on top of the water and then we put the leaf on top of the bubble wrap. Therefore, the leaf will not sink. And that is ingenious, you guys. So that is what we're doing now. It is late and it has been a few hours since I finished putting together this tank and I put my mail in. Um, so in this time, after I've finished, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. There's this one YouTube video in particular about breeding betta fish. Not that I haven't watched a lot of videos already, but there's this one video in particular where this person, they put the male in their new tank. They only gave the male like an hour and then they put the female in as well left the female in there for 24 hours so they could get kind of acquainted and then that was it, that's all you have to do. So I'm thinking maybe I won't have to wait a whole couple of days for him to get comfortable. Maybe I can just put her in there, you know, like now. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hello again everyone, it has been a decent little while since I put the female in with the male and just before I put her into the male's tank, I want to feed both of them so they don't end up starving in the next 24 hours that they're doing their thing. If I could touch on a couple of observations I've made with these two, the female, she still doesn't seem very interested in him, but I'm thinking that could be her personality. She might not seem like she's interested in him and they still might spawn, so that's what I'm thinking. And second of all is that my male has made a huge and beautiful bubble nest, much more beautiful and huge than any other bubble nest that he's ever made, so I'm happy about that. So yeah. All right, everyone, let's get this whole thing started. She's been hiding mostly for the most part for the last hour. I've been sitting here and no, I'm not very close to the aquarium. My camera's just zoomed in quite a bit, but they're playing their little chasing game. She's been hiding and she's coming out and she does seem a bit interested in him and I'm just smiling. I don't know if you can hear my smile, but I'm so excited. I think that they are gonna spawn. I don't know though. I can't really say it's too early, but this is a lot of, fun and excitement. I, I'm gonna have to stay up as long as I can <laughs> and keep an eye on these guys. I really love, I really love my female, I do. I really do not want her to get hurt in any way. And just so everyone knows, I did give the female a ton of places to hide. She's small enough so if she's trying to hide, she can. The male can't find her. And for the people wondering what I'm doing with my time, I'm just sitting here playing League of Legends on mobile, keeping an eye on these guys. It has been three days since we started this project and I have amazing news, you guys. We failed, we didn't get any fry, not this time. Um, my female's actually still in there with the male and it was going decently well for the first you know, few hours and then he, I think, is just too aggressive for her, so she started hiding from him longer and longer and longer, and now she's really not, not hiding from him. She's just flat out hiding from him and doesn't want anything to do with him, I think. So in the meantime, I've taken her out a couple of times. I thought maybe she needed a little bit more space so she could get prepared to spawn and, you know, have somewhere safe that she knew she wasn't going to be attacked by him. And so I took her out twice and it could be my fault. I did interfere. I, I took her out twice. I put her in the separation container thing and you know, everything was going well. It seemed I put her back in, you know, a couple more times and it's just the same thing. So she's not wanting to spawn, I don't think right now. And um, her back tail is a little bit bit up. Um, the bottom part of her back tail is gone now. It's not too bad. Otherwise I just would have completely like cut it all off. So. What we're going to do now is we're going to take her out and we're going to put her back in her aquarium and we're going to leave the male in here, sit his little tub next to her side of the tank so they can still see each other. But I also wanted to add salt to her aquarium so her wounds are able to heal better. Not that this is the end of the video or anything, but I hope that that's not like too disappointing for you guys. You know, I, I feel like we should be going through this journey together and you know, my, my problems, my mistakes, I want to share with you guys. Okay, so I just wanted to quickly go over how I'm going to add this salt to the aquarium. I wanted to show you that you do not have to have any kind of fancy salt to add to an aquarium. The only kind of salt that you really can't use is iodized salt. So if you go to your local grocery store, find table salt, find sea salt, that's just as good as aquarium salt. So that's just a hack. 
So the amount of salt that you're supposed to be using for your aquarium is one tablespoon per every five gallons. And since my female side of the tank is only 2.5 gallons, we are only gonna be using a half a tablespoon. Basic math, everyone. Now, this is the important part, you guys. You're going to need to make a mixture before you add it to the aquarium. You cannot add salt directly to your aquarium. It can hurt fish. So I would highly, highly advise you to make a mixture of salt and water and then add that to your tank. So. That is what we're going to do now. So I think that I'm going to be keeping him in this little container because I realize now that I did not properly silicone their tank, so they do share water. I read somewhere that when betta fish, male and female, share water, um, females can become egg bound. Oh, poor girl, look at her tail. So he tore her tail up a tiny bit, he did. She's so cute though. All right, everyone, and this is the end of the video. Again, I'm so, so sorry if I disappointed anyone. I'm a little bit disappointed myself, but you know what? This is just a journey that I feel like we should be going on together, you know? And I do have a question for you guys. The question of the day is, have you ever tried to spawn any fish and it just didn't work? If so, what is that fish that you tried to spawn and how did you fail? Let me know. I did say this was the end of the video, but I have one important thing to say before you guys click off. And that is a huge thank you to my patrons on Patreon. So thank you, Calvin, Danny, Stormy, Abby, Cam, Skippity Ski, my mama, Dan the man, my sister, CJ, Betta Days, Kathy, and Lou. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. I would not be able to make videos without you, seriously. And if anybody else would like to become a patron of mine, I will leave a link to my Patreon in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please do drop a like because it helps my channel so much. If you like me, do subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one.